everybody, I'm Sarah and this is Eric and we are Recorder Players. Players. So last week you would have seen my interview with Eric all about his career as a professional recorder player and we were talking a lot about improvisation and why that's important and fun for music making. So we thought we'd give you some practical tips, uh, different things you can try out and have some fun playing together. We are going to try improvising in a range of styles and tell you how as well. Also, obviously we haven't prepared this, because no. it's about improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> this video on improvisation is improvised. So Eric, maybe you can shortly tell, why would you want to improvise? We are now improvising, I mean, and every one of us is improvising when this person is having a conversation. Mm. I mean, the topic can be sort of clear and then, well, how you choose words or when you bring up which theme. I mean, everybody of us is improvising. Mm -hmm. So why would we use scripts when we make music? The second thing is that a lot of the music that we play comes from a time when improvising was part of the, yeah, of being a musician. A composer, improviser, performer, that was all just one thing. Right. And, and now we are living in an era where things are more separated. Nice, because maybe some of you will have already seen, a few weeks ago I published a video on getting started with improvisation. And this was very general introduction, applicable for any style. Today we're going to try and take you through some specific styles with points how to play in those. That made sense. For classical musicians we first have to get rid of maybe some initial fears that, that we might have. And one great way to do that is to start improvising over a drone. So we're starting with a drone. What style are we improvising in? We can improvise in a quasi-medieval way. Okay. Exercise one. We're going to play with a drone. That's a long D that's being held on. We're going to use the notes of the Dorian mode, which I'm going to put here on the screen. It's basically the white notes on the piano. And we're going to take it in turns to play a melody on top. And the point of this, if I'm right, is that I want you to feel if the notes sound nice with the drone, that's consonants, or if they're clashing and that's dissonance. doing this don't worry so much about where your melody is going but try and start on the D and find your way back to it if you know your beginning and your ending points that can uh, make it a lot easier to actually get going yeah and can I add something to that I think it is important also to focus on the simplicity mm -hmm. and not go all Jimi Hendrix right <laughs> away <laughs> of course there is also the issue in improvisation of a build-up Mm -hmm. So once once you are performing for five minutes, if you go, if you give away everything in the first um, minute, then where do you go from that? Yeah. Imagine the pitch in your head before you are playing the next pitch. Mm -hmm. This will also slow down. This is a little rule for yourself. Don't play a note before you hear it in your head. Mm. That's the first one. Where do we go from here? Uh, we could go to the folia. Yeah. Okay. What is La Folia? This is something that crops up a lot. It was one of the most popular um, base, base lines to, to make variations okay. on. It got to its most popular point probably the, the, in the first half of the 18th century. Mm -hmm. And many recorder players will know the famous variations by Corelli. Mm -hmm. Important again is the restriction and the build-up. Mm -hmm. So 
we gradually increase the complexity, but very, very gradually. Okay. So the, 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 the first uh, round that we will do is in 3-4. From those three quarter notes per bar, the first one is a rest. Okay, so you're always playing rest, something, something, rest, rest something, something. 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 So you could do this actually looking at the chords in front of you and yeah, just pick notes. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's definitely a first step. I'm going to try it again, but with the rhythm da 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 da. That's quite a lot to jump in with from the very beginning. Yes, it is. We were doing everything very condensed. Yeah. Don't forget long notes. Let's do actually one version with just long notes. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with long mm. notes. Okay. Then you really hear the dissonance as well, and that's yeah, yeah, something yeah. to enjoy. There's when you don't know what to do, have some plan B's in your back pocket. Okay. Something that you can always pull out, like. So it's basically something you've practiced before, you know you like, yeah. and you can put that in while you prepare yeah. your next moment of genius. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Where should we go from here? It'd be interesting to play something in French style, mm -hmm. kind of prelude. The French style is completely different from the, from the Italian style and the French like a lot of small ornaments or ornamentation that you can write down with just a, a symbol. First, the first thing we do is establish the tonality. Okay. Where, where are we? So if we are in B-flat major, it is most logical to start with the B-flat, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to build this up step by step. Eric, I'm going to give you a melody. And that sounds like this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, first, can you ornament this with trills? And we're going to add some dotted notes. added another thing that I wasn't supposed to add. What did you add? I added a mordent. Could you play the melody just with mordents? Oof! <laughs> uh. So now let's try it with all of our different elements. We've got trills, mordents, um, dotted notes and flattement, which is finger vibrato. Oh, and the last thing we're going to add is some jumps. Mm -hmm. So with this melody, feel free to jump anywhere else. Hey, really nice. I think we should do complete. We should do one modern one before we forget. Yes.
in the middle of our genius <laughs> improv. It was amazing. So amongst the many, many CDs that um, Eric has released, there are five that feature a lot of improvisation. We're actually going to do a giveaway and because there are five CDs, there are going to be five winners. To enter, you have to do two things. First, you have to make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. And second, I want you to comment with the answer to this question. How tall is Eric measured in alto recorders? <laughs> Five, three. So this is how tall I am. Thank you everybody for watching our small introduction into improvising in different styles. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here on the corner. Here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. In the description is a link to our web shop. There is my debut album that you can order. And up here is a link to last week's video, my interview with Eric about his career, wisdom, life, music. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye. Bye.